Bring in Linux to you! Hey guys, Max here, and I'm going to show you how to spin up a Nextcloud service with a Maria database in Docker containers. So there's going to be some prerequisites for this video. First, you're going to have to have Docker installed, along with Docker Compose, and at least pseudo privileges. If you need help installing Docker or Docker Compose, you can check out my other videos here. Other than that, let's get started. So, as you can see on the left hand side of my screen, I have access to my droplet. And on the right hand side of my screen, I have my little text document with all the major commands that are going to be needed to fill this tutorial. Um, in the video description below, I will have this text document linked so you can look at it or download it um, and use it for reference when uh, going through this video. So uh, to get started, we are going to be using Docker Compose to spin up these two containers. Uh, Docker Compose is a great little container orchestration tool. And um, to start off, we are going to pull my Docker Compose file from one of my GitHub gists. So to do that, we can just clone my GitHub gist and we'll just cop, I'm just gonna copy my command because that URL is long and I don't wanna mess it up. But at the end of that command, I am going to be putting uh, my Docker Compose file into my home directory under the directory Docker Compose and then Nextcloud. So if you want to put it into a different directory, say on your root file directory or um, in a different directory underneath your home folder or wherever, just uh, edit the last part of this command and uh, that'll decide where it's going to be going so I'm just going to press enter and as you can see it has cloned my uh, github gist which is my docker compose file into my home directory underneath you know my directory and then docker compose and then next cloud so now we need to change into the directory that we just put and cloned uh, the docker compose file into. So I'm going to change directory into docker compose next cloud. Okay, now that you're into your directory, let's just make sure that the docker compose file is there. So ls and I can see my docker compose file. So now that we are in our directory with the docker compose file now we need to edit the persistent data storage volumes for each container so that down the road when updating our containers we don't lose all of the data that we have saved in them and have set up so to do that just uh, open it up with uh, your favorite text editor Mine happens to just be nano because it's simple and I'm familiar with Pico. So, so nano docker compose dot yml. So now that you are into the docker compose file, just scroll down to the volumes and we'll just deal with Nextcloud to begin with. Now, the way they're set up, they're set up to make a containers directory in your root directory and then put a cloud directory in that and then split up Nextcloud and your MariaDB database in other directories inside that cloud directory. So because I don't want my persistent data storage volumes to be in my root directory I want it on my ZFS storage volume I'm going to add to the front of all these volumes where I have my ZFS storage volume mounted my ZFS storage volume is mounted at mount and then vol so I'm just going to add slash MNT slash VOL and I'm going to do that to all three in this one 
and the last one in Maria DB. So now that you have edited the Docker Compose file for where you want your persistent data storage volumes to be stored, now it's time to save your Docker Compose file. So for Nano, it is just Control X, and then yes, I want to save it, and Enter, I want to overwrite it. So now that you have finished editing your Docker Compose file and uh, put the persistent data storage volumes exactly where you wanted them, uh, now it's time to run your Nextcloud service. So uh, to do that, we are going to use Docker Compose Up. Now we are not going to add a argument to this to run it in daemon mode. We are just going to let it run in verbose mode to see how everything is going. So press enter and it's going to pull, download, and extract each uh, image for each container. And when that is done, it is going to then start spinning up both containers, setting up Nextcloud, and setting up the database for Nextcloud. When the terminal stops moving, that, uh, that means pretty much that both containers are ready to go. So now let's get to your Nextcloud instance. So just pull up your web browser and just go to your server's IP address or if you have a domain set up, uh, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go to my IP address. Now, as you can see, there is uh, it is ready to go, and it needs us to set up an admin account. But first, we are going to set up the storage and database. So click that, and we are not going to use SQL Lite. We are going to use uh, the second Maria database or Maria DB and MySQL. So now it gives us some things to fill out. And if you remember seeing at the top of my Docker Compose file, I had some information commented out. And it's giving you all of the information for this. So I also have it in my text document. So um, if you look, for a uh, database user that is just set up as nextcloud along with the password they're both just nextcloud the database name is ncdb and then the local host isn't going to be the local host it's going to be the name of the database container so the name of the database container is actually maria-db and if you don't change it to that, then it's going to look on the local host instead of looking for the con for your database container, and then it's going to just fail, and you're not going to be able to use your Maria database. So now, once that's all filled out, pick a username that you want. I'm just going to go with admin, and then you know a password. And once you get that finished, click Finish Setup. It'll take a, a little bit to finish. And then as soon as it's done and finished, you should get a little uh, welcome screen that'll um, ask you about uh, if you want to download the mobile apps or a native uh, desktop app. And uh, and here it is. Here's the little welcome screen. It also uh, shows you that or tells you that you can connect your calendar, your contacts, and access your files via a WebDAV client as well. So to move on from here, just uh, exit it. And now you are at your, your home screen, which is going to be your files. 
Now, essentially, uh, this is going to be your Google Drive replacement because you can add as much data for ever and you will only have to pay the hardware cost. So you only have to pay, you know, for however big a hard drive you need and that's it. You won't have to pay outrageous amounts of money for a Google Drive account for, you know, something substantial like, you know, a couple hundred gigs or even a terabyte. So from here, you can, uh, if you look at the upper left hand uh, corner, you can see files, activity, gallery. Now if you click apps, this is going to be all the apps that you can add to your next cloud instance. You can add calendar, contacts, so you can sync your phone with this instead of syncing it to um, one of the, you know, big companies like Google or Apple. Um, you can also uh, even add an office suite, um, add like a little recycling bin, as you can see right here. Um, there are official ones and then there are also third party ones uh, made by the community, which is pretty awesome. Um, the difference between Nextcloud and OwnCloud is that Nextcloud you get all of the features that the business uh, license and or the business side would get. So there are no like two variations of Nextcloud. It is just Nextcloud. Whereas own cloud, you would have, you know, the community own cloud, and then you would have the business own cloud, which had some more features that you would have to pay for to get. So um, I'll let you just, you know, look around in here. But um, before you go too, too crazy with this, uh, why don't you look at your upper right hand side of your screen? And if you click that, you can set up uh, the personal information of the server. You can set up all the admin settings for the server. So cron jobs, um, encryption, other things like that. Um, you can also set up users for family members, friends, um, all of that. So uh, I'll let you just, you know, look into all of those. Uh, but there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with this on top of having your own cloud service. There's just uh, a ton of extensions and everything. So before I let you go, um, why don't we uh, go up to the upper right and uh, log out. And uh, why don't you just exit out of that and wait for that later. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to update uh, both your Nextcloud and MariaDB containers now that uh, you have a Nextcloud service running. Uh, down the road it's going to get updated and you should most definitely keep your containers updated for security reasons and uh, for new features of course. So to do that. Uh, why don't we exit out of our verbose terminal and start a new terminal and then log into our server and now that we're logged in uh, go to that same directory that you have the docker compose file in so mine is docker compose oh next cloud I'm just gonna check that it's there okay so now that you're in your docker compose directory you're always gonna have to be in your docker compose directory to do these commands and update your containers easily so what you're gonna want to do now is you're gonna want to pull down those containers and then you're gonna want to pull the new images and then start those containers back up. So to do that, we're going to use the command docker compose down. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to stop the running containers and it's then going to remove those containers. And once, so, once that is done, then you're going to want to pull the new images. So you're going to want to use docker compose pull. And as you can see, it has checked and seen that we have the latest images as you can see. But if you had update or if you didn't have the latest images, it would then pull the latest images, download them, extract them, and you would be ready for when you start up the containers. So now that you have the latest images and you're ready to go, now it's time to start up those containers again. But this time we are going to use an argument with Docker Compose up. We're gonna put dash D and that's going to run it in daemon mode. And what that's gonna do is it's not gonna have the verbose mode that we had at the beginning. So you're not gonna see all the information in your terminal. It's just going to run it in the background press enter you'll see that it's creating the network it's creating each container and then it's done and it's ready to go so once you log back into your next cloud service um, you might notice or see that you don't have as many apps as you did before the update and to uh, fix that just go back and re-enable those apps and you'll be as good as new so now that you have your next cloud service up and running I hope you guys enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up if you liked it, comment below, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.